I started off feeling pretty excited about this exercise, the panoramic landscape, foreground and background. I read through what Richard wrote here and then I had a little look at the examples as well. They don't seem to be super representational. Uh, they seem to be kind of an interpretation of a landscape or an image that he has looked at. So I sort of have that in mind as I read through this. So step number one is to choose a landscape as a reference. I pull out my National Geographics and I have a look to see if I can find something that I can work with here. I'll give this a go. At least this can be a reference and I can interpret it in a way that works for me. Step number two is a sketch. I find all of this preparation part of the exercise is kind of like a warm up for the painting itself. I can start to envision what colours I might want to use or how it might go and I haven't yet begun. So I've got the sketch laid down. Number three is start painting. The instructions say to start with a larger brush and block in some of the larger areas. So I grab my size 10 brush and I get started. And immediately I start on an area that's not very large. So I really started off too detailed, I think, right from the beginning. And I correct this a little bit as I start to patch in with some of the larger washes as well. Immediately I feel as if I've started off kind of weird, but I just persist with it anyway and see what happens. So that was my first lesson. Begin with large washes. As much as it feels tempting, don't start detail, start large. I get to a point where I feel like I've done enough at this stage, even though I consistently feel like I've approached this phase wrong. <laughs> I also feel like I've brought in too many colors. I really haven't laid down the background so that I can then work with the foreground. I've just gone in willy nilly however I like, but irregardless, I get to a point where I feel like I need to stop 
let this dry and then come back and work into it more. The last step is once that preliminary layer is in and dry to come back in and use a smaller size brush to work with the foreground and the details. And he does say that it is helpful to limit your color palette. So start with less rather than more. Work with the mixing of colors directly on the paper. I admittedly did find this quite hard. I kept wanting to just mix a little bit here and there in the palette before I put it onto the paper. So I found that quite difficult. And to also change the water that you're using regularly so that the colors do not start to become dirty on the page. So I come back to the painting now that it's dried and I start to work in with more detail and more saturation on the surface and I have no plan as to what I am going to do or how I'm going to go about it. I have the instructions vaguely in the back of my mind at this point but I'm feeling like I don't know how to do it. So I don't know what will bring this into focus in the way that I would like it to or to at least feel as if there is a strong foreground and a strong midground and a strong background. So I just keep working with the colours to lay the layers in and darken the areas that I can see that are particularly dark. This was a challenging exercise. And the more that I was working with this painting, the more I wanted to just start again. And so that is what I'm going to do. I'm going to try this again and I'm going to approach it in a different way. I might reread the instructions and take heed of what is said and maybe have a bit more of a structured plan of action when I'm working with this painting. Now that I've got a sense of the image, I have the opportunity to be able to work with it again in a way that maybe will make a little bit more sense. I found myself wanting to do things that I thought were there rather than working with what was actually there, particularly when referencing the water. In my mind I have an idea about how water should look, yet I have a photo of water in front of me and I can't seem to get my head around what that actually looks like. So there are some things happening there that's making things quite confusing. Eventually I get to a point where I say, that's enough, let's call it a day, I've given it my first good try and I can call this exercise completed as the first time that I do it. I've learned a lot in this process and I think it's going to be really beneficial to come in, do it again. It's hard for me to look at this painting, there's not much that I like about it. I see it as a really beneficial learning exercise.